This news update is brought to you by... Say hello to Chelsea. Chelsea is a champion surfer, so she's accustomed to moving super fast, which is why she relies on super fast broadband brought to her through Flow's 100% fiber to the home network. It keeps her family sharing and surfing and saving each month. Combined, she bundles her Flow mobile, home phone, and TV services so she can enjoy much more for much less, and so can you. Visit any Flow retail outlet, call 1-800-804-2994, or visit discoverflow.co to find out more. One of a kind connection. This is how we flow. It's Friday, May 20, and time for the Barbados Today evening updates. With the details, I am Fernella Wedderburn. We begin with news that the beta standoff between the Umbrella Barbados Union of Teachers and the Ministry of Education is now over, and the two sides are finally talking again. Word of this from BUT President Pedro Shepard today following a month-long public squabble between the two sides that generated, degenerated sorry, into calls for the minister, Ronald Jones, to step down. However, Shepard tells Barbados today things are looking up and he revealed that meetings have been taking place between uh, union representatives and the permanent secretary in the Ministry of Education. But he says the union was still waiting clarification on several outstanding issues. We have to get back with the PS, to the PS with um, an, an agenda on, on, on issues. They are proposing probably to meet in the group, church only, I guess at the first instance. And then if, it's, if, they, if they think it is um, necessary, then the minister will probably then appoint us for a full meeting. But of course, the, the, the challenge now with the full meeting because the museum now is no longer in use. Right. So that that is a, a, a challenge for any large any large meeting. But we'll see how the meeting if if the one the historians come up, you'll see how that goes. And then see if there would be the need then for the larger group to actually meet the minister. But as it stands now the large group is still anticipating that meeting. In other news, another major solar investment could be in store for the island. The disclosure today by a top official of the Barbados Light and Power Company during a tour of the soon-to-be-completed $43 million photovoltaic solar farm at Trent's St. Lucie. Director of Operations Joanne Graves said the power company, which is owned by the Canadian energy firm Emera Inc., was presently looking into the feasibility of setting up a similar facility in another section of the island. Well, at this point in time, we are actually um, investigating um, the construction of another plant um, similar to this one. We are at the very early stages right now where we are trying to identify a suitable site. Um, and once that is done, we would obviously need to um, do the necessary things to be able to acquire or lease that site and then all the necessary um, planning uh, permitting would have to be done. But it's something that we're looking at um, to do another similar project um, in the future. Police were today questioning a number of persons in connection with the murder of Shono Rose, the 40-year-old who was shot and killed at Neil's Tenantry since Michael last Thursday. He was among a group of people gathered in the area when a number of men approached and discharged the firearm several times. Rose was shot in his upper torso and collapsed a short distance away. He died at the scene. Meantime, investigations are continuing into the May 10 murder of 50-year-old Colin Ford of 10th Avenue, New Orleans, St. Michael. Police Inspector David Welch, sorry, that's Police Assistant Superintendent David Welch, appealed to anyone with information to contact the nearest police station or Crime Stoppers at 1-800-8477. Hundreds of mourners from all walks of life converge at the Chapel of the Coral Ridge Memorial Gardens today to pay their final respects to Winston Anthony Lloyd Cozier a man known worldwide simply as Tony Cozier and revered as the voice of West Indies cricket. The large crowd spilled from the chapel into the grounds where several tents accommodated the hundreds that ranged from politicians, sports personalities, businessmen, family, friends and work colleagues. In a tearful eulogy, son Craig Cozier reminisced on his dad and the influence he had on his life. He described him as the consummate professional and a loving family man. I was lucky to have him as my mentor and teacher. 
as I do, charted the path in journalism and cricket, learning as much from his vast professional know-how as his human qualities. For a long time, the sole Caribbean presence on overseas campaigns, that paved the way for others to follow, and he was delighted to be joined by like-minded Caribbean men, such as fellow commentator Red Spurrier, Jamaican journalist Tony Becker, and photographer Gordon Brooks to share his experiences with, as well as Michael Holding, Fazir Mohammed, and Ian Bishop in more recent times. But Dad always had time for people, and he especially loved his family time. Holding court at the head of the table at one acre during dinner, banning anyone from receiving phone calls. But he was happy to break his own rule when BBC, Australia, or India called for interviews on West Indies Radio. Sports now, Clayton Cola Tonic Notre Dame kept their hopes of remaining in Barbados' top flight football alive by defeating Solaris Pylons 3-2. And we're talking action from the Digicel-sponsored Barbados Football Association Premier League at the Wildey St. Michael Astro Turf. And game was playing last night. In a must-win game for the two strugglers, the Dames got goals from Dwayne Mars in the 7th and 15th minute and Kyle Gibson in the 47th minute. Pylons, who have lost 13 of their 15 games this season, got goals from Keith Warner and Mars Cantleberry in the 47th and 60th minutes. In the other game, played a Barbados Defence Force sports programme, defeated Empire 2-1. There's regional and international news after this short break. Originally, Trinidad and Tobago's Prime Minister, Dr. Keith Rowley, says a policy should be in place by the end of next month, which will see relatives of slain law enforcement officers being compensated. He made the revelation in Parliament today. The issue is a little more complex than just handing someone a check because there are a number of uh, side issues that have come into the policy. So we're just ensuring that the policy is sufficiently robust to treat with the eventualities. And we are close to conclusion, so I could, without being held to the gallows, I would think that um, by, the end of, by the end of June, we would have concluded it. Yeah, four weeks, um, which would give the cabinet, a, well, we have, um, I would say by the end of June, this should be operationalized. Leader of the Opposition. Thank you, Madam. Would the Honourable Prime Minister be kind enough to indicate or tell us what are some of the side issues that the Honourable Prime Minister is referring to? Considering that it is the Honourable Member who is asking the question who initiated this matter years ago, I, I would have thought that she would have been familiar with the issues. But one of the biggest issues is exactly, exactly who the claimants will be and who are the beneficiaries who will be dealt with and in what circumstances so as to prevent an entanglement once you begin to uh, provide the support. That's, that is one of the issues and one of the main issues dealing with. Okay. On the international front, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention is reporting that nearly 300 pregnant women in the U.S. have tested positive for the Zika virus. It said uh, 157 of those tested positive in the U.S. and 122 others were in U.S. territories. And finally, the Mexican government approves the extradition of drug lord Joaquim El Chapo Guzman to the United States. His lawyers now have 30 days to appeal, and even if it proceeds, it could be months before he is sent enough to face smuggling charges. Guzman was recaptured in January, six months after escaping through a tunnel from his maximum security prison cell. 
And that's news and sports. But for the very latest, visit our website, www.barbudistoday.tv. Subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, and of course, like us on Facebook. You can also catch us on Izumi Media in bus terminals or screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you, as well as Channel 99 on Flow TV and Mix 96.9 FM. I'm Frenella Wedderburn. Do have a safe and wonderful weekend.